uh, to start the programme, what I'd like to do is introduce you to the notion of the communication model. So this is a way of understanding how we make sense of the outside world. What goes on in our perception, and then what do we do with what we take in from the outside world, and how does that drive our emotions and our behaviour? For me, when I first learnt this, it was like a light bulb going off in my head. Because I'd always wondered what makes us tick as human beings. And I'd studied all sorts of things. So I've studied psychology and all sorts of things, wanting to understand what makes us tick as human beings. When I first came across this, I thought, ah, oh, that's what makes us tick. Now I understand it. So I hope you get as much from it as I did. All NLP is built on an understanding of the relationship between the outside world and our inside world. So by that I mean we, we tend to be in the same external environment as other people around us. But what goes on on the inside can be very, very different. So a starting question is how do we know what goes on around us in the outside world? And the answer is as simple as it seems. We take in information through our five senses. So we see some things, we hear some things, we feel some things, we taste some things, we smell some things. And in NLP terms, we say that the outside world, all it gives us is sensory information. And we're bombarded by sensory information from the outside world. We are truly astonishing as human beings. We process immense amounts of sensory information second by second. So it's estimated that we process something like 2.3 million sense impressions per second. So we have 2.3 million sense receptors firing off in our body second by second. Now, of course, we can't pay attention to 2.3 million things uh, at any given time. So what happens is some of that information we deal with consciously, so we take it in, uh, through our conscious mind, but actually the vast majority of it we don't pay conscious attention to. It's just processed out of conscious awareness. So until I mention it right now, you're probably not consciously aware of the temperature of your left hand. But your unconscious mind will be processing it. Your conscious mind might well be listening to the words that I'm saying. You might be wondering what's going to happen next. But out of conscious awareness, you probably don't notice sounds in the background. So we've got split attention, if you will. Our conscious mind focuses on some of our experience. Our unconscious mind deals with the vast majority of it. And there's some good news and some bad news about this. So the good news is that your unconscious mind is almost infinitely capable. It can process and uh, pay attention to all of those things that are happening. The less good news is that your conscious mind is actually quite limited. So there's some famous research done in the 50s, a psychologist called George Miller, who came up with the notion that consciously we can manage somewhere between five and nine aspects of activity, chunks of activity at a given time. And you might know the experience that you've been busy, you're managing, and then somebody says, oh, can you just, and they ask you to pay attention to something else, and one of those things that you were managing okay before, it sort of falls out of your awareness. So George Miller called this, he called it the magic number seven, plus or minus two. So the notion of this is whatever you're paying conscious attention to from the outside world, it isn't the whole of the outside world. And the way we like to describe it on NLP courses, it's a bit like your conscious attention is like a torch beam in a darkened room. So whatever you're shining your torch beam on, you think that's external reality. But somebody else might be shining their torch beam on something very different. And you may have had that experience in your life. that You're talking about something that you assume that the other person uh, is aware of, and actually their attention's on something else. So whatever I'm paying attention to, and whatever you're paying attention to, we can't guarantee that our torch beams are overlapping. So one of the key tricks with NLP, one of the key tips, is if you want to work well with somebody else, what you need to do is you need to be curious about what's their torch beam on, rather than battering them to death with what your torch beam is. So the phrase is, seek to understand before you seek to be understood.